In this experiment, we're going to be investigating the conservation of momentum by looking at perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic collisions. Before we begin, please make sure to have your proper PPE, including safety glasses and anything else that your instructor requires, and make sure to clean and disinfect all equipment before and after use. By now, you should have reviewed the instructions for the lab, so I'm just going to walk through the complete setup for you. In front of you, we have our track. It has been leveled by adding our feet and making, and we know it's level because our carts aren't moving. We have end stops on here and the magnets on the end stops are pointed out. We have our two photo gates spaced at 40 centimeters as per the instructions. We have a scale for measuring the masses of our carts. We have a digital adapter connected to our photo gates which connects to our GLX. Something that, to keep in mind about the photo gates. You're going to need to adjust the height of the photo gates, both of them, because the cart that has a mass on it, if the photo gate is too low, it's actually going to pick up the mass and your flag as it passes underneath. And we don't want that. We want to just see the flag going under. So you're going to have to adjust the height of your photo gate so that you're only detecting the flag itself and not the mass that's passing underneath. Once you do this for both photo gates, you're ready to begin. In part A of the experiment, we're going to be investigating elastic collisions. Your lab report walks through the steps on how to set up and operate the GLX, so I won't go through that, but I will give you a few hints on how to set everything else up. First of all, you need to choose two cards where at least one end of a cart does not have any Velcro on it because we don't want these coming together and sticking together for this part of the experiment. You also need to set up your carts such that the magnetic faces are facing each other so that they bounce off each other and they don't stick together by their magnets. The other thing you want to make sure is that the flags are nice and secure. In the case of the cart with the, the mass on it, you can just tuck it underneath and that seems to work really well, but you may need to tape down the flag on the other cart depending on how hard they hit each other because the, the flags tend to slip pretty easily. When you are set up and ready to go, you're going to be applying a force to each of them, hopefully equally, so that they go together, bounce off each other, and go back. You do not need to use a lot of effort to get the carts going, so please be careful, as I'll demonstrate now. As you can see, it didn't take very much effort to get the carts going. Once that part is complete and you have your readings, you can use those readings to finish off the calculations for part A, and then you can move on to part B of the experiment. In part B of the experiment, we'll be investigating perfectly inelastic collisions. The setup for your GLX is slightly different, so please follow the instructions in your lab instructions on how to set up and record your data. And then the only other change that we have to do with the track setup is we have to turn one of our carts around so that the Velcro surfaces of both carts face each other. That way, when they come together, when they collide, they'll continue in one direction as a pair. I'll demonstrate how that works now. What you might find is you might have to do this a couple of times because it may require a little more effort than you needed in part A to get the carts going. But once you have your data collected, you can continue on with the rest of the experiment. Now that the experimentation part of your lab is complete, you can tear down and make sure to clean and disinfect everything as you put it away and then continue on with the rest of the lab. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact your instructor.